Hey guys, welcome to the Demcast, and in today's episode, which is episode 13, we're going to be discussing the sort of origins of Surefire Outdoors, how you start the company, etc., things like that. So, we'll see you in part one, and we'll go from there. Cheers, chaps. Hey chaps, quick advert break. So, as you can probably tell, this is our first advert with our fancy new mic. We're going to be talking about the ASG Ultra Air series of gas. Now, this is one that caught my attention when Clarkie came down for the ASG interview. It's a good gas. They've got a green one for summer, the orange one for sort of your mid-temperature weather, and then the red one for in winter. The green one has silicon, orange and the red do not. So, these will require a little bit more maintenance. This one, however, will lubricate your pistol, gas gun, etc. a little bit more. The nice thing I've noticed about these particular gas, this bottled gas, is they've got a temperature gauge on the side. So you've got the temperature to relate to the PSI. Each one will read differently, and you can help sort of get a gauge of when you need to be changing your gases, which is a nice little feature that they've added to the gas. Also, they've got a very affordable price point. I'll stick it on the screen now, so you can see just the rough gauge of the price. I personally recommend this gas. Go show ASG a bit of love, and help us fund the channel. Cheers, folks. Hey guys, welcome back to part one. And in part one, we're going to be discussing Shorefire Outdoors. So do you want to introduce yourself properly, dude? Absolutely. Uh, my name's Dan, I'm from Shorefire Outdoors. I started out playing airsoft in around 2019. And what happened is that I quickly realized that airsoft got quite expensive quite quickly. So I kind of set up my own business to subsidize what I do. Uh, and basically, it kind of got out of hand from there. That's pretty much what I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I pretty much did the same thing. I thought, I'll do a bit of tech in to help subsidise paying for my own tech work and getting my own rifles upgraded, and then it sort of snowballed a little bit, um, and now I'm here. Yeah, I know that feeling. Uh, basically, I kind of had the horrible... Well, I kind of had the the coincidence of uh, Ukraine kicking off at the same time, so buying and selling army surplus, which is what I was dealing with at the time, it just kind of exploded, and... I ended up with kind of some, some interesting stories of just helping people out from there as well. And it kind of got got word and started snowballing from there. So what is Surefire Outdoors? What what does the company sort of do? So just for people who aren't aware, yeah. where, how do they find you, etc.? So let's start with what do you sell? Okay, no problem. Uh, I, most, I mostly sell uh, army surplus, but uh, with everything going on with the war in Ukraine, stock is a bit low. So I've kind of transitioned more into uh, getting the more the airsoft consumables and that sort of thing at the yeah. moment. Uh, the past few years, uh, I've been buying and selling army surplus, finding the weird and wonderful, and realizing that it can very easily translate to the airsoft world. Uh, a good example is uh, the, the dreaded airsoft tax. You know, you probably know that feeling, right? Everything, the, the, the things that every now and then just, they're unreasonably expensive when you can find something on Amazon, which does the same thing for less. It just doesn't have that airsoft tag attached to it. Uh, I, that's what I've been trying to do. Uh, a good example is the British Army field packs. Uh, the MOD has basically said that these packs are obsolete. And the reason why is because they don't have a nerve agent resistant liner, which is kind of... Kind of odd. concerning. It's kind of concerning. So they've see, the British Army have come up and they said, right, we've got this same field pack, it just has that liner in it. But the ones that don't have that liner are now just being thrown away. And they look exactly like the new ones. Mm -hmm. They're just obsolete. obsolete. So, so, and that's why I come in and kind of think that's useful to somebody somewhere. And I'm willing to kind of save it from the scrap heap, so to speak, and make it useful to people. Yeah. So that's the sort of stuff you're doing. You're buying in surplus and you're reselling. And I believe, when I first spoke to you, you said you, your big thing is to really describe and make sure it's quite clear as to what the item is on the website, things like that. Absolutely. That was a huge annoyance when I first started out, and I'm sure some people have the same who are watching this podcast. Uh, basically, a lot of websites either have inadequate photos, uh, just useless descriptions, or uh, a lot of other things that just don't really tell you what the product is. And that's kind of what I'm all about as well, is that I want to make it, make this, like, kind of elevate that standard of airsoft retailing a little bit, just kind of, if anyone pays attention to me and realizes what I'm doing and kind of mimics that, I'd be happy just with just with that happening, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's just a, a bit more in-depth explanation as to what it is on the site, things like that. So, 
obviously you, you sort of started supplying the surplus goods. What are you stocking now as far as sort of consumables are concerned? Okay, so... EVs and gas, things like that, is it? Or? So for the past couple of years, I've been just kind of sat on Etsy, just kind of treading water. And the reason why is because I, I try and offer new things mm -hmm. and it would just be unreasonably taken down. So um, if you go onto Etsy at some any point and search for AK-47 slings, you can find tons. They're all vintage, they're all either repro or whatever. You look at an L85 sling, you won't, you won't find any because they've been taken down. Um, good, another good, good example, more directly related to Airsoft, spy, uh, new pro speed loaders have been taken down for being firearms related. Interesting. Exactly. Uh, so it's just, it's just things like that. And now that I've kind of escaped the clutches of Etsy, uh, I've got my own website now, which is surefireoutdoors.shop. Uh, you can kind of find the more things that I'm looking for uh, that are more interesting to people. Uh, I've started stocking BBs. Um, I'm trying to get involved with gas, but you can kind of see the complications with that because I, I have no idea how UPS, sorry, patrol base, ship anything gas related. No, it's, it's strictly on their prohibited items list, which it's, is very strange. There was a bit of a thing with distributors a while ago where they couldn't ship pyro. All of a sudden, all, this, all the, the sort of postage companies went, we're not doing pyro. So a load of them stopped buying in pyro and it was just, you could sell smokes, but you couldn't sell bangs. Exactly, it's ridiculous. So. Uh, Basically, I've kind of I've got on my feet far enough now. I've gotten to that point after dealing for three years that I can stock the directly airsoft-related things. And I, at the moment, I offer things that are more they're more friendly to the airsoft starter. I, I'm not going to sell you. I'm not going to sell anything that's just going to get chucked in a bin after six months. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm interested in. I, I want to sell a quality kit that lasts people a long time, and they get to keep it. Yeah, I mean, I saw you uh, just to sort of uh, preface where we were the other weekend. We went to Shift Your Rift event and you had a stall set up there. That's right. So what did you have on that stall? So if, if they were to bump into an event, because you've got a few events coming up. That's right. I'm a bit what desert. sort of, what do you have on the stall, generally speaking? Generally speaking, uh, we've got quite a lot of surplus because uh, well, cause, uh, we had a Ukraine deal that recently fell through. So we are trying to get rid of that and we accept disgustingly cheap prices to be honest on that. Uh, we sell, well, we try and sell Clothing that's going to last, uh, British Army U-backs, for example. Uh, we've also brought in some US Army field, uh, field shirts, which are mm -hmm. really quite nice, to be honest. Uh, but generally, uh, more the more der the airsoft-related stuff is the we sell a lot of Viper. We happen to sell a lot of Viper Tactical, mm -hmm. and that's because it just tends to be the stuff that people like. Yeah, and I mean, it lasts. I've got a couple of Viper slings I picked up at the Rift event because I needed a sling for all my rifles. The, vi the big, you know, the thicker ones that can sort of load bear a bit. That's better. right, the ones with the padding. Mm. Yeah, that's... Those two-point ones, they're really quite good. That's so right, we've stocked stock some of those as well. Viper have stepped the game up, except for they don't stock Rhodesian stuff yet, and I will bully them every time I see them. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, they are, they're a good, good brand to stock generally. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the VX chess rigs are something that, are, that I'm really into at the moment, just because it's just whatever riff you get and you want to change your mind later down the line, just get one of them little sleeves, take it out and just pop it back in and it's not a problem. That's all right then. So moving forward, obviously you've got the website now and you're stocking surplus kit and a few bits of consumables. What else are you planning on moving into? Is there much else in the future for it or is it just sort of stay ticking along at that? Or I'm looking at moving into kind of getting into the part side of things. Uh, I'd like to go into gas blowback, but I know that AEGs, like I can't leave out the, a the AAG enjoyers. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's a massive, both are massive markets. I've got... I've tended to specialise, if you can't already tell by the massive pile of Jeftron next to me, is we tend to specialise in AG. Because more often than not, as if you've got a gas gun, you know how to maintain your own kit. And as a tech, me catering to the gas market is almost, almost pointless. I mean, there's the well. I think you've stocked Waldo Customs, don't you? Already? That's right. Yeah, we've just recently got hold of this. There's a, he's making a lot of new products these days. So yeah. That's so what, what are your thoughts on that sort of the Waldo Custom products? Very good stuff. Uh, basically, he recently it's been rebranded from Waldo Customs to Waldo Dynamics. Yes, Waldo Dynamics. Yes, sorry, uh, of course. But a lot of that stuff is I use it. In, I, I use it in my hack app that I've brought today. Just kind of like the, the fun bits that I've come to show off. Really, um, the nozzle return springs, the recoil springs. It all seems to be fairly sturdy stuff and I've been I like to test the stuff before I give my official opinion on it yeah and makes sense it's it has been a noticeable improvement and it's I'd say it's worth your time yeah noted so just 
so everyone knows. I'll put the link to your website in the description below. And if you want to get some Waldo Dynamic stuff, whether it's directly from Waldo or support a local business if you know Surefire, etc., you can go to that link and get it from there. <laughs> what events are you going to this year? We've got quite a few, to be honest. Uh, first one's going to be Midlands Air Software. Uh, we've recently just been come back from Shift Your Rifts. Uh, we've been trying to get, we've been trying to sneak our way into Warzone Fest, but to no, no dice. Um, there's going to be a lot of reloaded. I've, I've heard there's going to be a Shifty Rifts reloaded coming up as well. When is that? Is that towards I, the end of the year? I I, I, it's, yeah, it's going to be around September time, if I recall. But there's, but you didn't hear it from me. So, um, what else? Oh God, what else? There's, there's quite a few. There's quite a lot of fr few reloaders as well because Midlands Air Software wants to do two a year now mm -hmm. nowadays, and hopefully a No Man's Land weekender at the moment. I quite like No Man's Land as a site. It's an interesting site as well. So. People will be able to catch you there, which will be an interesting one for me. Fingers crossed. What sort of guns do you run then? Because obviously we've we've discussed about the business, what you're stocking, how you're moving forward. What do you run personally? What do you, what's your preferred platform? I think that's probably the difference is that I actually, compared to a lot of other retailers, I, I play as well. And that's why I do it. I play to fund my ad addiction, essentially. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of the more... Not like a, a, I don't want the, the crazy builds. I'm more of a, a semi-only kind of guy, semi-only gas bow, blow back. Um, my dream has always been to get a, a decent L85, as you can tell by the logo. I've just kind of been obsessed about them, really. Um, right now, I've got a WL85, and it's been kind of heavily modified to kind of avoid the blame of just being, get avoid the reputation of being a WE gas blow back M4, the, the reputations they kind of have. Um, and that's at a good point right now. I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to polish the bolt carriers, getting decent setups, improving the barrel, and that sort of thing. Um, we could, I could kind of talk about it for quite a while. To be that's honest, all right. That's all right. You riff, riff all you want about it. It's, it's, it's the point. But what else do you run? So you've got, I heard you mention earlier you've got the high capper. Mm -hmm. You brought a few other things to talk about. What was it you, you, you've actually got then? The um, thing is, I kind of use it, uh, the opportunity to. If I see a good deal on a gun, I will kind of just buy it, so at my, at my, <laughs> buy it, have fun with it, and then just sell it on again. Uh, my recent one was Attack Forty One. What did you get into Attack Forty One? Very good, mm. honestly. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I was just surprised to see that out stock out of the box, it was hopping four eights, which was really incredible. Like I thought, oh, it's stock. I'll buy, I'll buy a bottle of point fours and go with there, kind of take it in moderation. No, it just took 4.8 straight yeah, away which is really impressive it. and the only bit that puts me off about the TAC 41 is it's fucking enormous yeah it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a like a boy. long ass gun isn't yeah it? it's, it's, a, it's a big boy and I can see why kind of people are going in towards those uh, the new recently released TAC 41 light builds if you've yeah. seen those kind of like the more budget friendly version yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, what is it? it's a sport line model or whatever sport light or something like that something, they've got loads yeah. of different variations but that's really honestly for what it's worth it's, it's it's rivaling the VSR at this point, which I was very impressed with. I mean, with. your VSR has always been your platform that you buy, spend a fortune on, and it's good. Then Novridge came out with his offering, which isn't bad. We've we, we've had sort of mixed experience with them. They've mostly been reliable, but they're they sort of a bit old school now. The ASG's offering for the the know. Scout, isn't it? The yeah, Stein Star Scout. Scout. That's the one. That's, I like that. That's a nice gun. I'm very on the edge of getting one of those because they are. I'm, I'm not really a sniper. I mean, I, I bought I bought Attack 41 and then sold it. And just some of these deals for like the ASG Scout are just kind of just really dragging me back into sniping yeah. again, even though I'm not yeah. really like too no, enthusiastic I'm not big about into sniping, it. But I enjoy playing with like the Scout and things like that, especially right. when you don't really have to piss about it or modify it too much. It just works out the box. So. Yeah, I think that pretty much rounds off part one. I think so. Hopefully, you'll get to see Surefire at these events that are coming up. And if not, go on his website and buy some stuff. Help a local, help help a local supplier out, and you know, support <laughs> local UK business. So, in part two, which we'll be back for in a moment, we'll be discussing the Shift Your Rift event, and we'll bring on Elliot, who came with us. So, I'll catch you in a minute. Cheers, chaps. <music> Hey guys, welcome back to part two. And in this, we're going to be discussing Shift Your Rift. 
and we've got Elliot and of course Shawfire who joined us. So you were a retailer at the event, you were a player, and I was oh. just sort of an idiot walking around. So <laughs> um, <laughs> let's get the seller's perspective or the retailer's okay. perspective. Yeah, uh, very interesting. Um, I think compared to a lot of other events that I've been to, I've met a lot more people this time around and the retailers were, they kind of weren't afraid to come to you as well. So, cause I kind of, oh, I manned the store for 25 hours out of two and a half days, to be honest. I, I kind of lived off those, the coffee coming out of those cups. We were relaying back and forth, kind of living off of them. But uh, retailers were just coming up and saying hello and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, it like a very friendly event. How much was it to get a, a stall? Uh, nothing. That's not bad. That's Can't not, it's, I, think, I think they've taken the viewpoint that adding retailers kind of adds to the event. They, they add value rather than yeah. the retailers need to pay. So I think, I think that's kind of a really healthy viewpoint to take, to be honest. Now, obviously we were just sort of players at the event, yeah. but what did you think of the, the, the retailers on that sort of main strip? There was more there than I expected. I, I, I also liked that it wasn't just Right, you've got your brands of retailers. You had secondhand sales there as well. You had everything that you could have wanted to purchase, whether it be brand new or secondhand. You had it there. Yeah, it was it was a really was, nice eclectic mix. It was of a stuff. good a good mix of what was yeah, mm. a good mix of what was there. It wasn't just right. You've got people who were selling replicas down one side, and then you had gear down one the other side. It was it was all mixed up. You also had yeah. training things in there. Cause I think it was. Was it JVG or something? I can't something? remember all the all the places. So if yeah. we do, if we don't mention your store, I do apologise. There's just too many to really remember. There was only one store that we were interested in. Um, oh, come on, <laughs> just for the fucking Elcan. Anyway, <laughs> so to sum it up, what I was seeing was there, there'd be like a, a bigger shop and then a smaller little store, a tech, then there'd be a three D printed place, yeah. and then there's all these different things. And it was really nice and eclectic. Yeah. Plus, between all that, there was the second hand sales all over the site. It was just bring a table, set up, and shift your riff, really. And it worked incredibly well. So it's the site itself, it's on an old airstrip. It worked really well. As far as the, 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 the most impressive thing that I saw was getting signed in. I knew you were gonna say that. I was Absolutely. so impressed with that. It was so Absolutely. quick and efficient. So for, to sort of clarify, how it worked is you pulled onto the road and then there was a marshal at the, the entrance and he went right are you selling or are you here to play obviously we were here to, to, there to play so he said right you're going down the left hand side of the track you go down to essentially a t-junction you met by another marshal he'll just clarify just to make sure you've not got the wrong name then he'll send you to the end of a little runway of the roundabout go around the roundabout and pull up on the left and there's th there was three tables on those three tables there was your insurance waivers got out Sign your insurance waivers, take it to the first tent. You don't, you, meanwhile, the vehicle's parked up. First tent, they sort of check everything, sign properly, take your payment. Next table was, I think it was to get you banned or something like yeah. that, wasn't it? Then the third table was, I can't remember what I it was. The first no, it was like, was your goodie bag. Your, it was a goodie bag, which we call it. And that was sort of your brief, and then he went, right, get back in your vehicle. Next marshal will tell you where to park, and that was it. You were in, you were signed in, insurance waiver was done. Really, quick and efficient what was it like for a retailer coming in it was even better to be honest basically uh, pretty much exactly the same scenario as you we came down the left side of the track came around the roundabout came back and got to those te tents that you were mentioning and kind of pulled up and said we're a retailer who are you for sure fire outdoors great here's your band you plots here and that was realistically it i was very impressed because a lot of the events we go to it's kind of Marshals get confused, or is the park is the retail parking over here, etc. Because it's a bit different than just dealing with a player. It's kind of that different set of needs, and sometimes marshals aren't really on it, realistically. Yeah. But no, marshal the marshal staff were yeah, very I was, good. I was, I, say. I couldn't praise them hard enough. They were so on point with the organisation, even down to getting the game brief on, making sure people were chronoed. I mean, the game brief was it was we survived the game brief. Yeah, uh, we got we even got the patch. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to that. People who understand know the meme. It's a long brief, but if you just sit through it and keep your mouth shut, you get it over with. It's just one during the day, you'll survive. There was a couple of drones flying around, loads of marshals. It's just, it, I couldn't, 
quite praise the marshalling and how they ran the event well enough. It was phenomenal, really, really was. Moving away from the game briefs and the signing in, the chrono, I found that quite straightforward. So he walked out, the what? there's only one exit and entrance to the game zone. And just past there, there's like a shooting range with a chrono station. Go chrono, get a zip tie on, you're away. There's also a chrono range in the actual sort of safe zone-ish where you can take your rifle, take a mag, stick your glasses on, shoot down the field, there's chronos there as well. So I had no problems with that. What, about, what were your thoughts? Straight, same same procedure as you, just I went straight out the gate because we'd got our bands, we were ready to play for the the Saturday, we didn't play the first first half of the day. So yeah. the second half we just walked out, luckily there was a guy still stood there, gone, chronoed, go straight out to play. Mm. I didn't see any safety issues. I saw no sort of negligent discharges, anything like that. It was all very much above board. Did you see anything as a... Because obviously you were on that main drag as a retailer. Was there any safety well, I, issues? I was or? plotted right outside that firing range that you were mentioning. And to be fair, everyone was very... Everyone was abiding by the rules anyway. But there was always someone there being attentive. It, yeah. it, it wasn't just like, you know, just a bloke stood in the corner on his phone, just like that, just minding their own business. No, paying attention all day, which I was very impressed with. Um, one thing I was going to ask you was, um, oh, what was it? Do did the marshals understand like the the the, the niches of how airsoft crowning can be? It sounds yeah. silly, but it's not some some marshals at some sites will kind of let you poke a BB through, or it must be a point two dual no, creep, etc. They understood dual creep. They knew to ask what weight BB it was. They were crowning on both FPS and jewels, which I prefer. It was it was yeah as far. as... From my point of view as a tech, I thought they had it well down, because obviously I'm a marshal and a tech. I understand that side of it myself. I couldn't complain. It was it was on point. That's impressive. So I think on the chrono as well. I think there was only one problem that we actually had, and I think we, me, you, and Kieran all agreed that it was that chrono was definitely something wrong with it. Yeah, but it, every chrono is going to be different across all the sites. You can't you know you can't make people buy a new chrono every two weeks because yours reads are different to theirs. Um, but it was it was mostly all right. It, yeah. uh, pretty much no problems. Now the camping. How did you find the camping? Ten out of ten. I it was great. I thought again. it was great. They, they got the parking down to an absolute T as well. They made sure it was nice, organised rows, plenty of space between the vehicles. It was just well done. The whole thing really. The, the whole camping set setup was nice. The people weren't too rowdy. Weirdly, I expected it to be like partying till stupid o'clock, but. They didn't really have a big beer tent or anything. They had a, a store where you could buy a few tins from. But um, there was no massive super late parties. I mean, I think we were the latest people up. I think when I went to sleep, everybody else around us was either lights out or there was like, you know, the odd few people kind of knocking about in the chairs around little fires. I think, I think like it was that. generally considered that, that like lights out was like 12 o'clock. Yeah. And they said, oh, it wasn't really like go to go to bed, but it was you need to quiet down, it's 12 o'clock now, which is a... Yeah, it was it was nicely done. And then obviously a marshal started riding around a stupid clock, oh, waking everyone up, which was Don't funny. get me started on that two-stroke. <laughs> you loved that guy, he was no, your best friend. No, he was my worst enemy. <laughs> Five in the morning on the on the Saturday morning, I had to woke, being woken up by a two-stroke, and then six on the Sunday, so... Not that was just, just fantastic. Just um, yeah, it was my fault. So, <laughs> yeah, overall can't complain. Where were you camping, by the way? So right, right by the stall. Right by the stall. Right so by you the know stall. the stall? Did you have to pack everything? Obviously, you have to pack we most just, of it away. We just generally made it safe. It was kind of leave, like leave the leave the tent up, leave the leave the tables out because if they get nick, what is it like, what forty quid a table or something? So who's all the fucking table. Exactly. Who's going to make a fucking table? So, any, but all that just went in the back, and we kind of just camped near the near the van, just to kind of security. But the problem was, is that obviously the two strokes going by. But if you if you overslept. You've got the armoured vehicles. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. Now that nicely leads us on. As players, they had, I can't remember the company name again. Sorry, I can't remember it. They had armoured vehicles on site. So they had the Land Rovers, which I believe were Rift Airsoft's actual Land Rovers. Yeah. And then they had some, it they had like a, a Bradley or something like that. Uh, I think they had a Pinsgauer, which is kind of like a, like a base, like an armoured truck. And then they had some, I, I don't think it was, I think it was a Scimitar. It's just a big fucking tank thing, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's <laughs> big got, square yeah. metal box with tracks. Makes diesel noises. Yeah. I liked it. <laughs> One thing that I did have to commend Riff, uh, Riff for was uh, I, did, I had a brief chat with Tony, which was kind of like on me, on me dealings out and about, and they was going to bring a Challenger, apparently. 
that would have there been was cool. there was discussions of bringing a challenger but the problem was it was going to cost four grand for them to move it to the site and that and they just kind of they didn't want to pass that on to you guys in terms of the ticket prices mm. which i think's a really respectable take to be honest i mean what they could have done in hindsight obviously is said we've got the option of bringing a challenger if you want to donate there's the option to donate and if it doesn't meet that donation we'll just refund it that would be interesting because yeah. I bet the community go I want to see a big tank here's 50 quid absolutely because uh, yeah fighting, ar fighting around an a main battle tank that's, yeah. that'd that'd that's, cool. Cool. that's that'd crazy that would have been really cool but it was cool enough being able to jump out of them yeah the, now another thing they were doing so they sort of separated the vehicles 50-50 for each team and I think they were like running a circuit round the site because obviously they can't really do a a great deal of shooting but you could sort of get in the back of someone and they'd ferry you around and it was very very cool very immersive you're halfway through an airsoft game and then all of a sudden a load of track vehicles come trundling past you and you can use them as sort of cover i mean there was a five meter safety rule where you just sort of stay five meters back from the vehicles but yeah it was it was really quite immersive yeah. how did you find it i loved it the having the vehicles on site because you didn't know you knew where they were coming from, but you didn't know if it was yours or the enemy team. Yeah. If it was your team, you sound. If it was the enemy team, you didn't know if people were going to be jumping out of it, if that convoy had already died, yeah, what was going of, on with them. People would follow along behind the vehicles yeah. as well, wouldn't it, they? So. It emphasised the push. I could see things getting slightly stale. Like, for the size of the site, there was areas where I was like, I don't really want to play there. It's just bush to bush combat. Nobody's really going to do anything. Yeah, but as soon ground. as those vehicles came through, everyone from whichever side was pushing with them because it was just free cover yeah it's just easy changes that dynamic yeah. doesn't it just it, takes one bloke to say come on get stacked up behind the vehicles and then everyone piles in because they all grow a set of balls and they start pushing yeah. um the marshalling around those as well i didn't at any given time i wasn't out of sight of a marshal there was marshals everywhere incredibly well really? marshaled games mm. wow the players were mostly fine. I didn't really have a problem. I'm sure there was a few people who moaned. It's, I think it was. Soft, I it think was, out of the rumblings, there was a couple of people who just had kind of like that post-lunch grumble. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Everyone's had too much to eat and they're feeling bit lazy. Too hot, bit you know, a bit yeah. tired. They need to have a snooze and chill the fuck out. But that, apart from that, that was it that I've heard of. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought the airsoft was good. The it site is cool as well. It's what is it? Seventy something acres total. It's, it's, it's a big, big. It's a big site. It's a big site. For free, it's definitely a forty-minute walk round if you go from where we started on the Sunday, which is like the top end, to go all the way back round. I made lost, a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just follow that wall. It will take you back to the track. Which wall? Okay. So let's describe the terrain because there's a bit of a funny story here. Uh -huh. So it's obviously an old airfield. There's a lot of old runways, but between that airfield, there's sort of fields with woodlands in them and big open fieldy sort of long grass areas and thorny bushes and shit loads of waist high nettles. Ooh, this lovely. dickhead wore shorts. And it was so fucking funny because we decided let's push through this field. There's a bank of grass, we can't see the nettles. So we start pushing through the grass okay. and then we come under some sort of level of fire from the enemy team, but it was close enough where we had to start jogging out of the way. And I just turned to see him screaming as he's running through a patch of nettles with bare legs. <laughs> <laughs> just watching him go, ah, ah, trying to run through these nettles. I was fucking wet. Were you wearing a GoPro by any chance? Unfortunately not. Oh, fuck. It would have made gold. That would been, yeah, that would have, it would have been the end. You've been framed. Yeah, yeah. That's what that is. I, I, I wouldn't have been seen again. It would have been me quid. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the terrain was pretty cool. Yeah. They, had, they have some cool CQB areas as well from... What I can gather, they're like old shooting range things, so there's like big concrete berms each side and the sand wall where you shoot into for pistol training or whatever it might be. And they built like a CQB alleyway through all those, which was kind of cool. And there was destroyed, well, not destroyed, but maybe decommissioned vehicles, I guess. Yeah, there's a load of de... Uh, de well, some are a bit knackered, let's be yeah. honest, but there's a load of broken down old vehicles. I think they call it the tank graveyard or something yeah. like that. That's cool. It's just... There's lots of variation. There's some hilly areas, there's some gullies. It gave it's you more of a It's not too hilly. It's fa fairly yeah. flat site, but there was plenty of variation. Yeah. It gave you more of I felt more immersed in what I was doing, seeing not just the vehicles moving around, but also the ones that were just on the, on the floor. Yeah. The best way to say it. Kind of having a fight with somebody when you're one side of a tank that's been destroyed and they're the other side of a tank that's been destroyed or within a load of containers and things like that. 
just felt so much better than just being out in a woodland shooting from one tree to another. Or behind a pallet. Or, or, yeah, yeah, or, behind or a pallet, pallet wall. Or... Yeah, you didn't just feel like you were doing just your normal everyday bit of airsoft. It yeah, felt like yeah. you were doing something a bit different. It feels that you're like you're not going to be able to do every week. It feels like that scenery should be there. And that's something that yeah. I think that more airsoft sites need to bring up. Like uh, a good example at the moment, what, what I've been seeing is Six Mill Airsoft. They do like something big... very, they do, they've, been, they've been making big moves with their site that I'm really appreciating. Like uh, they've got like downed planes or, yep. or minefields, but the minefields have craters in them, which adds cover. And that's what I feel like you're describing with Rift yeah. at the moment. Yeah, it's it's nice to see the companies making the effort. And we spoke to, uh, well, I think it was one of our marshals anyway there. I can't remember his name. I'm terrible with names. <laughs> He went, it's all for the players. That's what their first and foremost thing is because they all started off by playing airsoft and then moved into marshalling, running the company, etc. So everything they do isn't about purely about profit, it's also about thinking of the player first. So they, they will spend a bit more money to have better cover, so be it, because it's a bit more realistic. Hence they'll organise the vehicles to come out, things like that. They tried to organise a helicopter, but it keep, because it's on an old MOD base, it's subject to their ownership, isn't yeah, it? And it keeps, they're a bit wishy-washy and they'll cancel things last minute, but they, they, they do try. So it's it's really quite, uh, what I'd probably call a bucket list event. What I used to think NAF was, that's something, I don't want to dwell on it for too long because I know people are a bit fucking touchy about the whole NAF subject. What are your thoughts in comparison to the NAF? I think my problem has been that there's not when you when you go to the stalls and things like that, like besides the airsoft, there was a lot of things that you could look at. Is this an AF? At an AF, yeah. yeah. Whereas if you move over to Riffs, there's everybody selling everything, and you yeah. and if you if you if you need something in a pinch, you'll probably find it. Mm. Like um, I was speaking to somebody on uh, social media the other day where he was. He, rather, he was looking to 3D print a stock rather than go, just going out and finding one, like a Magpul CTR style stock. Yeah. You'd be able to find that in five, ten minutes at Rift. You could find it for less than 20 quid as well. You could have gone out with £100 to Rift and had nothing except for whatever Rift you were using, and you could have got everything for less than that £100. You could have got yourself a rig of some form, full clothing to wear, probably a set of boots. There was, there was plenty of deals to be had, so... It was, it was just a good event. I personally, it's a smaller event than National Airsoft Festival. How many people do you reckon uh, there, to total? To I, win? Think, I think day one there was about 450 players. Yeah. But then you also had your Sunday skirmishes on the second day as well. So realistically, probably on the second day, you probably had 750 people out yeah. there. Overall turnover of people, you're probably talking at least 1,000. So like three and a half times smaller than NAF. Yeah. Well... Not necessarily. No, it's, it's about I'm, the fucking. I'm, I'm talking honest, about just right like now, rough it's player. about the same size as now. No, no. Oh, I'm just talking rough player numbers <laughs> and ticket numbers and all that um, sort of I thing. I mean, on the NAF thing, I've only been to NAF once, and this is the second event that I've ever done in airsoft. I would much rather go to that again. Yeah, the, yes, the rift event is good. Potentially three days of camping if you go down to NAF on the Friday, you stay till the Saturday, and stay till the Monday even. But I would much rather do that again. Like you've said earlier, there was more marshals everywhere. Things felt more friendly, more... Definitely, definitely. I can't think of the word to say here. Open? Yeah. A bit more relaxed, yeah. a bit more, more chill. Relaxed, more relaxed, more chill. More... It didn't feel quite as... More for the player. Yeah. More Best for way. The player. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, they've each got their own sort of vibe about them. NAF very much feels like a festival. Riff feels like an enormous jumble sale is the best way I can describe it. Yeah. You know when you get like the... Bring your rifle, it's car boot day at your local airsoft site. Imagine that over a couple of days with beer and camping, and Trits everyone's up. more friendly. Yes, the trips are baking in the morning, but that's our <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's, it's a good event. If you're still trying to make your mind up of what you want to do next year and what events you want to pick, definitely make sure the Shift Your Rift event for next year is on your list. And if I'm not mistaken, they might be running another one this year, but just keep your eyes peeled on their social medias and ask the marshals, I'm sure they'll be able to tell you. It's definitely like one of the events to be looking at, looking out for, for sure. It's up and coming, definitely. Yeah. I, I see it growing every year as well. I, I do see it getting busier and busier, especially now, because obviously we're, we've approved of this site now, so we'll, next year we'll recommend all our mates to go. So it's going to, instead of, because it was... 
me, Kieran and Elliot that went and then we'll probably say to other lads look let's all go so it could turn into 20 people next time so it only takes a couple of groups like that and you've gained a couple of hundred players here and there and it's just going to escalate another thing I want to cover is the, the actual facilities so the toilets food that sort of thing the toilets were really well managed I thought so they had port for each day so the Saturday they had, they had two port next to each other one was a Saturday, one was a Sunday, and the Sunday's one was turned into the other one so you couldn't get in the door. So in the morning, on the Sunday morning, they just turned them and they're good to go. You've got a clean toilet for Sunday, job done. And I thought that worked really well, nice and simple. Everyone seemed to respect the toilets, which was nice. Yeah, I'd say so. But I think that's going to be a numbers problem. As things expand, they'll probably find there's more dickheads that are turn up. But that's just the way it is. An interesting thing as well is because I brought I brought my wife with me and she didn't obviously go to the port loose They actually specifically kind of encouraged the ladies to use a dedicated toilet in the shop. Yeah. So it, that was brick and mortar. Don't worry about it. It's going to be clean, which I thought was yeah, it's definitely nice unique touch. as well. That was, good for, that was good for her at least. Yeah. So they have to use pissy seats at a festival. Yeah. <laughs> to... But we will. Yes. Exactly, the men will suffer. Yeah. Yes, the men don't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> the food and coffee stands, things like that, what did we think? I'd have liked to have seen more. I think they I would think have been nice to have some guest ones, come on. Yeah. But yeah. from like what I can gather, they... Van, local, something yeah. like that. But from what I can gather, the, the, the facility <clears> they had was either their normal sort of shop type food stand they've got set up plus a gazebo out front yeah pretty much and a few other things but i thought it was more than ample really yeah. for the numbers they had it was fine it was but the problem i think the problem was is because there was they they tried to make the friday more of a thing this year apparently and the problem with that was is that the store wasn't open that's See, we, that, we that, didn't that, get there on friday because we were recording the last podcast yeah. so too. while we was there is that do you know where the where the stores were and the, you had kind of had like those metal gates yeah those were shut on friday and that was to kind of give the retailers a bit of peace to set up and do yeah. their thing. But then that also meant that the food store was closed off. So your only choice was to pretty much to order Domino's in or bring your own food. Yeah. And to be fair, we didn't know that. We just thought that there'll be a burger van or something. Yeah. So I mean, a, a, a probably a polite suggestion to the, if those guys at Rift Airsoft decide to bother watching this is what would be nice and a nice helpful thing for the locals to do would be to invite your local food vans out because there's always those sort of artisan pizza things in the old converted horse coffee boxes, vans and coffee all that vans. sort of stuff support local businesses get them in just say look we're going to have 500 people here on friday now that all want food and drink bring the van down set up for free sell all you want i mean and from what i remember did not did one of the marshals not say that the burger stand that showed up on the saturday evening was that not mod run it was yes yeah yeah because they had open fire as well which is, I think that's why they had the exceptions because yeah. they were essentially the landowners. That was nice. Yeah, that it was that was good. It was cool. So overall, the food was manageable. Yep. You could do it, but I'd say on the Friday night, if the same happens at the next event, make sure you've got enough for your dinner Friday evening. So the next thing I want to talk about is the goodie bag you get. Now I'll just chuck up right now a little video that I got of Kieran opening up his goodie bag in the back of my shitbox camper van slash big bird so we're at the shift your rift event and we've been parked up at one of the corners of the site so far so good the signing was great really happy with that went for the safety brief also nice and straightforward the marshal is on point keeping people quiet etc no complaints thus far we've sat out the first half of the day because we turned up late we did the podcast last night and yeah no complaints plenty of stalls met some folks so we're just going to go over Obviously, we're in our camp now. We're going to go over the goodie bag you get. So, Kieran is in the back of my van. So, let's have a look. What we got? So, first thing that I've noticed is we've got a map of the safe zone, uh, which is also double sided. It will obviously show you all the traders, where to go with it, if it, all the events and stuff like that. So, what else do you get in the bag? So, obviously, we've got the map with yeah, the details, the information, etc. Uh, it comes with rules, obviously, sit down and read them. It comes with a few flyers. Uh, what's on site today? What's that? That's more to do with uh, Rift Airsoft, which is about the site and stuff like that, which is pretty nice. Nice to not read. So we've got a patch from Empire Airsoft, a sticker, and a complimentary Flamingo 50 degree hot rubber. 
which is nice for a VSR or gas blowback uh, rifle or pistol. Flyers from Second Summit, which is a surplus store from the looks of it. Um, what else we got? So basically we've got a load of yes. flyers, a load of discount codes. Yes. I'm really impressed with that uh, pink flamingo hot rubber. So to finish off, really happy with the goodie bag, I don't know about you dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. Like I say, the hot rubber, the stick of the patch, and then obviously all these got this quite nice. So, that being that, there's the rest of the day, the rest of the weekend to go. So, go and explore, and I'll be back soon. Cheers, chaps. So, you'll see in this goodie bag, you've got the map, a few other bits. You've got a Flamingo hot rubber for, for a GBBR. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. I'll show you. It should be in here. Excuse the noise. And there's somebody's pilfered it. Oh, not uh, that one. 50 degree. I'm impressed. They're, well, they're like a what, 10 yeah. to 15 quid. Yeah, it's such a nice Retail thing anyway. to open uh, like a goodie bag and actually get some fucking goodies that are just an A4 piece of paper. You've got a patch that you get a little glider plane, my glider plane, no one else is having it. From the 90s. Yes, it, they're the best ones. I know, I've got I had such nostalgia when I saw one of them. You get plenty of goodies. You get like a, what was it? You get the eBay store thing. For who is it? Second Summit Surplus, is yeah, that? Second Summit Surplus. He's a, got... He was actually in the store next to me and he's a really nice guy. I believe he's operating on Instagram at the moment, so he's I, I give him a visit. Loads of goodies. They've got Finch embroidery, they've got what else have we got? I can't read that because the lighting can try out something. That is White a coupon for White Sphere Tactical. Which I believe is their site shop. It yes, it, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're, the, they're inside the building anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're doing. But. Then they've got this sort of safety rules and all that, and then the back of the safety rules, you've got your map. It was just nicely laid out. I couldn't really complain. The value, no, that's another Did thing. You? The value for money for the weekend, how much was it? I think it was 85 pounds. I'll double check and we'll chuck it up on the screen. But 85, 85, 85 pounds, if I recall. Pounds sounds, sounds right. What did you think? For 85 quid, were you happy? Definitely. I got, if I'd have wanted to, yes I didn't do the both full days, but I could have done two full days of airsoft, which if I go to my local site, which I'm a member at, that's £50. Then you throw in the small things like hot booking. Yes, it might not be something that I wanted, but... You didn't know you needed been, it. Yeah, it's yeah. something that You've got was one. given to me. And it was just nice to see those little things. Nice to see marshals that were actually out on the site, actually doing things not only just on the site, out in the actual camp areas, make sure things were going fine and things like that. For the 85, you couldn't do another event like it, I don't think. So, any more thoughts? Oh, the gameplay. Gameplay. So, we've, we've covered the game area. What were the actual games like? It was good. It was just quite a simple attack each other, defend, well. Large scale the, attack and defend I believe the Tuesday, no, Tuesday. Saturday we did a laptop defence kind of thing, was it? There were specific areas around the map that the defending team would have to defend a laptop which were in three or four different locations. The attacking team, go out and attack. Well, it wasn't like a, these are the places you've got to attack. It was go out and find it. Go and use your time. I like that stuff. Optimally, yeah. Don't just, right, you've got to walk a straight line up this track, go attack them, because that just gets boring after a bit. Nobody wants to do that after, say, 45 minutes, a couple of hours. Whereas actually going around exploring the site, getting stuck into different firefights, which you don't know whether it's the firefight you want or whether you should be kind of dipping it to try and get an objective, it was it was good. Mm. I enjoyed it. Will you be going again? Oh, definitely. If they run another one this year or next year, I'll definitely resign mine again. Will you be going again as both a retailer or playing? I'm honestly, I'm so I'm so annoyed that because I run, I essentially run the stall as a one man band. Uh, obviously I've got people helping out but by and large that means that I have to be at the store 24-7 that's the worst bit about it because it's the way that people have been speaking about it is that I really want to get stuck in yeah. and that's the annoying part but I mean if I if I get to be there be a part of it and help out that's that's what I'll do yeah. so yeah all being well we'll see you there again next year and yeah get yourself booked into it and go and enjoy a game it's well worth every penny so I think that pretty much rounds up part two. Yeah. Yeah. And so. we'll see you in part three, which will be what's on the next episode. Cheers, chaps. Hey guys, welcome back to part three, and this is just going to be a quick one. 
in the next episode we're expecting the guest which is going to be the chairs of the show so we're looking forward to seeing those guys they're going to be traveling to see us on the saturday so yeah all being well we'll catch you in the next one cheers chaps <laughs>